So let's take a look at the P squared Myriad Auto Importer version 4. And uh, this is a way of monitoring folders and pulling into your Myriad system anything that gets put into those folders. And uh, there's a couple of changes here. If you're aware of the auto importer, there's a couple of changes here in version 4 that uh, set it apart from version 3. So then, this is the main interface of the auto importer. The auto importer could be put onto your Myriad server, could be put onto a, another machine, or it could be uh, sitting on one of your studio machines. It minimizes down to the system tray, so it will get out of the way. It just needs to be a computer that's got access to your Myriad audio wall and also has got a user account as well because it, it needs to have a user account that has rights to write to that particular part of the audio wall else is going to be in trouble so let's take a look at the main interface shall we we've got the file here we've got the option to check the groups so check any uh, groups that we have created car browser enables you to view the car browser as normal the usual mini audio browser and then you've got exit importer that allows you to add a group remove a group view the history and logs we've got settings here audio settings brings up the usual audio wall settings the global ones file locations that's where you type in the file location of your audio wall uh, importer settings that enables you to set it one of the things that the importer can do is send an email on success or on failure and uh, so in here this is where you would set your email server address and uh, if it needs a username and password so this would be your mail server details also you can change how often it checks the groups and then down here minimize to the system tray if you tick that then uh, the next time you click on minimize it won't just go down to the taskbar it'll go down into the system tray so that is importer settings the directory settings that's in here because as I said you need to be a member the user that's logged into the computer which is running auto importer needs to be a member of the system basically it needs to be in the p square directory and uh, we only have one security group here but uh, you may have some more restricted ones so you just need to make sure that the user of this Windows machine here has a user account in your Myriad system and in there if you go to audio wall you need to check that it's got the opportunities to write to all of the cart range and uh, also read is useful as well so you need to just make sure that it has full rights to the areas that you're looking to import stuff into so that's why the directory settings are in there and uh, so that's settings license details as normal as we've seen and then help here you can create a support file find out what's new and then jump to the website and the usual about so let's create something shall we and uh, we've got a, a couple of different scenarios so let's uh, do a import first a scenario using a brand new feature in version 4 and that is the ability to import files whether or not they've got a cart number at the front or not so uh, this is our import new music section and uh, we are going to have a range here of 3200 to 3230 and you have a group type here import new files from a directory or check the audio wall for f new changes to audio files it might be that you have some systems that write directly back to that audio wall and that was the that would be the option that you would check but uh, we want to import some new files from a directory so uh, let's say for our scenario here that uh, we have someone making some songs queuing them up sorting them all out and dropping them on a network share so that all of the radio stations can pick them up and uh, so that network share is in here is in the c drive and if we go to imports here that's where he's going to stick all those files for me so we're going to check that directory there and then you have some options here only import files that have cart number in the file name uh, and so if you don't tick that then what it will do is it will pick any of the files in there and it will pop them in to any blank carts within this range 3200 to 3230 also use the file archive flag to check if the file needs importing that is uh, if its uh, archive flag has been set as part of the file properties delete the original file after importing and keep the current 
cart's title information if updating an existing cart. So again, you do have the ability to overwrite carts if the cart number is in the title of the file name. If it's not, then it uh, won't overwrite it. So there are some options there, and uh, we want to just make sure that that's not ticked. If it is ticked, then none of our songs are going to import into the system because we haven't got any cart numbers at the front here. We're also not going to delete the original files after importing either. Into the logging here, you have the ability to send the email notification after import. And so you type in what the from email address is. You've got success, failure, and also retried as well and you can take a snapshot down here for logging purposes. Overrides, this is very, very useful indeed. You can uh, override the timing information. You can also override the title information. Uh, what a lot of stations do is leave that, set the description to, and then you can uh, keep it imported and it will tell you the date and time. So uh, we'll, we'll leave that one on. The other two we'll leave as normal because we're going to actually import the title and artist in separately. You can change the content. So here we can have our change our content to it's going to be music and these are all our brand new songs so they're just going to go straight into our A-list. You can set the background color, the text color of the cart and you can also normalize the audio as well. So uh, we're going to do that. We're going to tick that, normalize our audio to history and you get to see a history of the import so that's all set up that's our four tabs uh, we're all okay on there and we're going to click on okay or oh, actually we're not going to uh, set the email that's why that message comes up so we're going to click on okay and that should see us okay and there we go down at the bottom yes it's importing our songs from that c imports folder that we've got and so it's sucking those sucking those in telling us what it's doing. And if we go to our Myriad system, there's our 32, we already had something here, 3200, so it's uh, dropping stuff in to the empty spaces, so it's already imported that one, imported that one, imported that one, and it's also imported these ones in here as well, and we've got our imported date in there. We can see everything that's going on and bingo they're all in there so it's automatically imported them in refresh the audio wall and we've got our brand new songs already on to the audio wall itself so that's the uh, that's the new option the new way of doing it without having to have any cart details in the title if we go to that C imports folder and we can see we can see our songs here and uh, Got, we've got a few bits and pieces, we've got a few web files, got a few mp3 files so that uh, pulled all of those in for us and uh, this time what we're going to do is we're going to actually put a cart number into the front so uh, we're going to stick here for this uh, back to basics let's stick in 3215- dash. and so this is the only one here which has got a cart number at the front so if we just go back here and we can double click here to amend that and we're going to say here only import files with cart numbers in the front. See here we've got a few seconds before it's going to check and so this way and actually what we'll do is we'll pull that one in and we'll say also delete the original file after importing. So if we go back to our folder here and we also set this one over here we should be able to see it do its thing there it's imported in just that shape shifters song check through that and then it's deleted it from over here now if we go to our 3215 on the audio wall there we go it's imported it in given us the date and time and uh, there it is on 3215 if you want the auto importer to import into a specific cart, you need to make sure that the cart number is in the file name. It doesn't need to be right at the start of the file name, but it needs to be somewhere within the file name and also not up against some other digits. Perhaps you've got uh, the 24 hour clock in there as well. It will take the first number that it comes across. So if you've typed in 9030 space 1600 news cart, then it will uh, it will import it into 9030 cart number. 
it uh, won't put it into the 1600. But if you have put in 1600 newscart 9030.wav, then it won't be imported because it's going to uh, figure out and find something wrong with the 1600 at the start. Also, it, it, if you've typed in 1600 as just 1600, not 16 colon 00, um, then it will try and import it into cart number 1600. And if that range you don't have rights to, or the user logged into the auto importer doesn't have rights to, then it won't import either. So just a, an update there on naming conventions, and there are further details on the PDF quick guide uh, on the P squared website, psquared.net. What we'll also do, we'll go through and we'll create one to scan for audio wall changes. So here we go, check the audio wall for new changes. So what we can do here, check audio wall, and we'll stick in the range 3200 to 3230 again and so you have the options here check the audio wall for new changes to audio files compare cart's last modified field against the date and also we can here remove the cart if audio file is deleted so that just enables us to go through and just clean up the audio wall if we wanted to so actually what we'll do is uh, we'll do that we'll click on that and what i'll do is i'll go into the background and uh, remove a cart number off the actual myriad audio wall as well so uh, let me just uh, let me just do that okay so i've deleted 3215 which is uh, what we added in earlier on and uh, we've deleted the audio off the server and so if we add in that now as a um, new facility so here check audio wall then after 30 seconds, it's going to uh, spin through, check through those audio wall files, and uh, and then hopefully delete them. So if we uh, just go back here to Myriad, you can see the audio wall. The audio is vanished because we've now got an X by the speaker. And uh, let's just grab up the uh, auto importer and just uh, wait for it to do its thing. We should be able to see down here at the uh, seconds that it will uh, go through. If we want to speed it up, we can just do check groups now. It's gone through, it's done a little check. Removed cart 3215 back to basics, you see down here. Group two, because that's our second group that we've selected here, and then bingo, the audio wall refreshes and we get rid of the cart number. So quite a powerful bit of uh, bit of kit there to just uh, be aware of, but uh, that is the check audio wall for new changes to audio files. And uh, you can uh, change that all the way through and uh, give it a go and uh, you can do login overrides again for stuff like that and uh, you can see a full history of uh, bits and pieces that it's been doing as part of the import groups. And that is the Myriad Importer version 4 from P squared.